All right, so today we're looking at um, what we're going to call unit circle trigonometry or circular trigonometry. Um, and what we're going to do is look at angles in standard position and coterminal angles. And again, when we get into circular trig, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking for angles. And as we do so, you're going to see we're going to be thinking about them in form of like a little circle type of a thing, okay? Um, when we talk about an angle in standard position, we are looking at um, an angle by forming up, uh, being formed by fixing one ray, which is called the initial side. And then we're going to rotate the other ray which is called the terminal side. And we're going to rotate that about the vertex. So what happens is that you're going to have these two different pieces, right? And then like you're going to be opening. And so do you see how as the pens are opening, the angle's getting bigger? That's kind of what's happening here, okay? Um, we're going to say that an angle is in standard position, and that's how we're going to graph our angles. An angle is in standard position if its vertex is at the origin, and the initial side is always going to lie on the positive x-axis. So our initial side is always going to be starting here. This is going to be considered zero degrees. The angle that's marked for us here has its terminal side here. So you learned in geometry that you need two parts for an angle. You need two rays, basically, right? The other thing that we're going to mark in this class when we are drawing a specific angle is this right here. This is our directional arrow. And that's going to be important because that tells us what direction our angle is going in. Where did it start? Where did it go? What direction did it go? Because with this as a terminal side, we're going to learn that it's also possible that we could have gone, don't draw this, um, in this direction instead. So the reason that the directional arrow is important is it tells us, okay, did it go this way or did it go this way? Another thing that we'll look at are these different markings. Again, when we start here, yeah, mm -hmm. when we start at zero, isn't this a 90 degree angle from here to here? And then this is 180 degrees, 90 degrees more is 270, and a full circle is 360. Okay. Um, and again, one thing we'll be referring to a lot within this unit are the different quadrants. And it's important that we know where our quadrants are. The first quadrant is the one that is all positive in the upper right. And the reason that we name the quadrants that we do um, is because um, uh, this one to the left is quadrant two. And that's because that's the way that we measure angles in this positive direction. And then we move around to quadrant three, and then we move around to quadrant four. Okay. If we want the angle to be positive, that's the direction that we're going to go. A positive angle always goes counterclockwise in the direction of, like, of the quadrants. So a positive angle would go in this direction. You can draw it wherever you want. Okay. <clears throat> A negative angle is still going to start in that same spot, 
but a negative angle is going to go clockwise instead and will go in this direction. So this says to draw an angle with the given measure in standard position. And so in letter A, it asks us to graph 135 degrees. We always start at the positive x-axis. And we want to think about where 135 is going to be approximately. Well, we know that coming up here is 90 degrees. And this is going to be 180 degrees. And 135 is um, in the middle of that. If we look at that, if we take 135 minus 90, don't we have 45 that's left? And isn't 45 about halfway through in between? So that's what we're going to do is we're going to rotate that about halfway between the axes. And then that would be our terminal side. Do you notice that my direction, that what I'm drawing in green, also has an arrow on it? That's important because you're telling people that it's starting at the initial side and going to that terminal side. Okay? okay. All right. The next, and, and that's it. That's your angle. That's all we're doing. That's all we're doing is graphing that angle. Okay? The next angle says 640 degrees. Well, this is bigger than 360, right? So take your calculators and let's take um, 640 and let's subtract off 360 from that. What's left? 280, okay? So what that means is that, again, we're always going to start in this standard position. And we're going to rotate a full 360 and an additional 280. And I'll show you how we can do that. Again, eventually I'd like for us not to have to label these, but if it helps us at the beginning, I'm very happy for that to happen. Okay. And what we wanna do is rotate a full 360 and a 280. So here's how we do that. We're going to start at the initial side. We're going to rotate 90, 180, 270, 360. Do you see how I ended outside of where I started? So I didn't land right back where I started. I'm, I'm kind of like spiraling. Okay, so I know I'm in the, in the same term, uh, initial spot, but I'm showing people that I went all the way around, and now I want to go an additional 280. So another 90, 180, 270, and then a little bit extra. And that spiral tells people that even though we are landing here, that this is our terminal side, that we didn't just go from here to here. We went all the way around and then another 280 degrees, okay? So you're going to want to make that spiral. Again, make sure that we have our initial side, an arrow, but like the, the spiral and the arrow on the directional arrow, and also an arrow representing the ray of the terminal side. Okay. Now letter C is negative 105 degrees. We always still start on the positive x-axis, but if we have a negative angle instead, we're going to want to go the other direction. So we're going to think about this as 90, negative 90 degrees and this as a negative 180 degrees. So negative 105 is going to be past negative 90. About how many degrees past negative 90? Well, I should say how many degrees past negative 90 will negative 105 be? 15, right? So is that going to be in the middle? No, it's going to be closer to the negative 90, right? So let's just go to negative 90 and then a little bit further. And 
and then I draw my terminal side. And that's how we draw those angles, okay? And I think in the answer key, I think I, uh, I labeled them, maybe I didn't. Um, we don't have to. It's nice to have them labeled, especially because we're just estimating where they're landing. But that's how we graph angles in standard position, okay? So that's one of our learning targets today is that I can draw an angle in standard position. The next learning target concerns what are called coterminal angles. Coterminal angles are angles whose terminal sides coincide. Coincide means they're going to land right on top of each other. And if they basically coterminal angles you can think of is that they land in the same spot. So if they land in the same spot, through how many degrees would you have to rotate until they land on the same spot again? A whole circle of 360. So coterminal angles in degrees, because that's what we're focusing on today, are found by adding or subtracting multiples of 360 from an angle. And this says to find one positive and one negative angle that are coterminal with the angle. And our first angle is negative 215 degrees. So what we're going to do is just add and or subtract 360 degrees. So just take negative 215 and add 360. What do we get? 145. That is going to be an angle that is coterminal with negative 215. Now why don't we take negative 215 and subtract 360. What do we get there? Negative 575 degrees. Those are two angles that are coterminal with that negative 215 degrees. Now, are those the only angles that are coterminal? No. When we think about things that are coterminal, um, there are lots of different possibilities. So, for example, if I think about, again, where negative 215 degrees would be, so negative 215 degrees means that I would go negative 90, negative 180, and then a little bit extra from there, okay? So that's graphing negative 215 degrees. We also said that 145 was coterminal. Do you see that if I started at the positive x-axis and went in this direction, that that positive 145 lands in the same spot as that does? We also said negative 575. So I could, for example, um, so I could take negative 180, negative 360, and then go all the way around to negative 575. Does that make sense what we mean by coterminal? They land in the same spot. Now, are these three angles the only angles that land there? No, aren't there an infinite number? Because you could add or subtract 360 degrees a whole bunch of times. Let's keep that in mind when we look at our answers for letter B, which is asking us about 570 degrees. What we want to do, in a sense, is add and subtract 360 degrees. Now, I could add 360 to 570 degrees. Isn't that going to be a very large angle that we have to spiral a lot for? Do you see that starting by subtracting 360 degrees still gives us a positive angle? Usually, and so if you add 360, what did you guys get? 
9.30, okay? So I'm going to put that this is okay, okay? But traditionally, when we give answers or when we think about those angles, we traditionally give answers that are like closest that we don't have to do a ton of rotating for, okay? It's the coterminal angles. So this answer is fine. It is not wrong. But it probably wouldn't be the answer that is in the answer key or like in a textbook. If you subtract 360 from 570, what do you end up with? 210. That's probably the answer that you're going to see. Isn't that like going to be less spirally than that 930? That's why we would usually choose to report that as the answer, even though 930 is okay. So it, to get the negative angle, then wouldn't we want to subtract 360 from 210? So let's subtract another 360, and what do we get there? Negative 150, okay? And you could potentially subtract another 360 and give that angle, and I would need to mark that correct. Subtract another 360, report that angle, and that would be correct. But usually the angles that we report are the ones that are closest to zero that aren't the ones that are given, okay? And those are the only two things that we need you guys to do today. So I'd like you guys to try these three you try questions and see if based on what we've talked about, we can um, be successful with those three problems. Okay, um, so here's what our answers should look like for the you try questions. Um, when we have the 65 degrees, the 65 degrees should be more than halfway to the 90, do you agree? Okay, um, make, and I, as the conversations I had with you guys, make sure that you also have the directional arrow that I have colored here in um, lime green. Um, and then these are the coterminal angles that need to have a degree symbol on them. Letter B, this is what negative 130 degrees looks like. And in letter C, um, we have to spiral twice because um, 740 had two 360s that could go into it. So we spiraled once, twice, and a tiny bit extra of 20 degrees. Notice the coterminal angles I reported were 20 degrees and negative 340 degrees. However, if you did have 1100 or 380, that's okay. Um, but make sure that when you report, you have one positive and one negative angle, okay? All right, thanks so much.